minutes away from 12 o'clock. The Funky Farmer is in the building. I can see him. He's doing his videoing as we speak. There he is. He's giving me a wave. So I'm probably, perhaps, am I now on the video through about, I don't know, eight sheets of glass somewhere? Yay, there we go. Uh, the Funky Farmer is Richard Cornog, and uh, he's a, can I say a YouTube sensation? There I go. I've just said it. I think you are. And he's going to be chatting to me after 12 o'clock today. First get first real guest I've had in the studio for a couple of years. on BBC Radio Gloucestershire. Now, Richard Cornog is a dairy farmer in Wotton under Edge who has an alter ego. About twice a week, he transforms into the YouTube sensation that is the Funky Farmer. And the Funky Farmer channel has 138,000 subscribers and over 1,600 videos of life on the farm. And to tell us more, I'm pleased to say we welcome the man himself into the studio. It's Richard Cornock. Hello to you. OK, lovely to be back here. And great to have a guest. I know it's that sounds, fab, isn't it? That sounds, sounds so desperate, doesn't it? But you are my first guest in um, much longer than two years because oh. I was on maternity leave just before the pandemic. So I, then nobody sat in your seat. Oh, wow. I wonder why it was so dusty. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, where I don't even know where to start. i tell you where we will start. The advent calendar, because I've been trying to mm. search for Gloucestershire's most bonkers advent calendar, and I think you're going to provide me with it. Well, I, I, <laughs> I, I like to a challenge and do different things. So actually, I've tried two advent calendars. I've tried a beer advent calendar mm. and... I think I really topped it with this one. A porch scratching advent calendar. That's wrong. That is that, so No, wrong. that was awesome. I can tell you, a porch scratching a day keeps... I don't know what don't away. Know. <laughs> probably keeps, not healthy. Keeps but, the ladies away, probably. Yeah. So um, in your pork scratching one, mm. was it a whole packet of pork scratching? It was a little mini packet of pork scratchings every day, but there were different flavours. Hey, how can you get different flavours of I didn't know they exist. You can have a... Um, peppercorn one or a salt and vinegar one oh. i mean i guess someone had to make a calendar so they probably thought we've got to make all these different flavors but yeah and i love it. the fact that somebody bought that for you thinking yes. it was completely appropriate you I, know? Know, I think they know do you know actually someone who follows me on youtube did send me a, a massive pack of uh, pork scratchings one day have you mentioned this on your channel before? they knew they do know i could like a snack <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> What happened to the ploughman's lunch? Oh, well, yes. I'll, I'll leave that as well. <laughs> right, more to chat about. First of all, I want to talk about your lovely tree. Now, a few years ago, in fact, I know exactly when it was. It was it was six years ago when I came to was your it farm. That long ago? And we found wow. mistletoe. We did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it was six years ago. Because you have got a lovely tree in your garden that's um, covered in mistletoe. However, Storm Arwen's had oh, it. Oh, well, it's in the orchard, actually. It's the um, So so we've got a lovely traditional orchard, you know, the big standard fruit trees that grow really tall. And uh, there was one particular tree, a beautiful tree, and planted uh, probably 70 years ago by my father, covered in mistletoe. And I loved it. Every year, you know, you come to this time of year, it's a beautiful sign, sight with all the berries and stuff. Storm Arwell come, came, and, and this tree was uh, quite healthy and alive, but uh, I went outside. Where's the tree gone? Lying on its side. So completely, the, the wind had actually just, took it just taken yeah. all the branches down. The whole tree, the whole tree just Goodness went, ripped out a huge me. chunk of soil, um, <gasps> led on the side. In fact, because it was down, a, f a friend of mine saw a picture of it, and he said, can I have some mistletoe? So he's got some for his lads to sell around the shops in Arbor. Right, you, you see, this is it, You're always, you can always make a bit of money. Oh, can't yeah, you? <laughs> and uh, I've given some so, to someone else, a lady who runs a farm shop, and she's going to sell some for ye uh, Yellow Wellies, which raises money for, I think it's mental health in farming and stuff. So, you know, every cloud. Yeah. But a, a bit sad to see this tree go, although yeah. we have got some other trees with mistletoe on them. So. Yeah. That's good. And also new to your life is a little puppy, a yes. Jack Russell. Buddy. Buddy. A little, little chap called Buddy who is a completely bonkers nut job little Jack Russell pup. Runs around the kitchen table at about 300 miles an hour and decides to have a little poo somewhere. In the house. Uh, in the house. <gasps> and it's, anyone who's got puppies will appreciate toilet training. is a bit like children, isn't it? They don't get it at first. 
it's worse than children because he could it literally is. be anywhere. I know. Um, and um, what sort of colour is he then? Oh, he's he's got a little bit of white, a little bit of brown, little sp- spots, very nice little stripe down the middle of his face. Um, just a lovely little bundle of chewing, fun, really. Chewing anything, oh, getting me shoelaces. Chewing the other day, I, <laughs> I was sat on the sofa and heard this gnawing sound behind me. Looked over my shoulder, jumped up on the windowsill, and we've got these uh, money boxes that are shape of a cow, and he was chewing the ear on the on the cow, oh, gnawing away. At it. No, <laughs> I'm I'm just looking through now your uh, YouTube uh, channel to see if I can see. Has, has, has Buddy made? He's the been on it. Yes, yet? there is there is a few going oh. back. Maybe a few weeks ago, there okay. is one or two videos of Buddy, or he's in the videos. We'll have a little look. He's at a little that, guest then. star appearing every now and then. How life on the farm then oh, i it's mean good. is it's it exciting. good it's, it's uh it's busy always busy um i like said we've we uh we're all, this time of year the cows come inside so i'm a bit more flat out than in the summer when it's a bit more relaxed because they're outside grazing um had a bit of a problem on the video i put up on friday we had to throw away a load of milk because the tanker couldn't get to our farm because not because of uh, lack of drivers but actually we had a breakdown and our farm's quite small, it's got difficult access, so the tanker couldn't get into our yard. They didn't have a, uh, a, a sorry, I didn't have a tanker that was small enough to get to our entrance yeah. that was spare once the other one broke down. So at uh, 8 o'clock at night, I opened a tap and let 1,800 oh. litres of milk go. That must That's be, quite traumatic. That must be heartbreak. Does that absolutely break your heart? It does. We get compensated for it, but actually it's not about the money, it's about the it's, kind of... It's wasted, isn't thing it? ...thing of, you know, and... you. With the short notice and at the time of day, I haven't, I couldn't find somewhere else for it to go. Mm. Interesting thing is that after forty-eight hours, they won't pick it up because it's past the time they want it. And that's because the tanker that usually comes had just happened to it break, break down. down, and the one that and they there sent wasn't a was, a, was too too, 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 too big. Large. They couldn't get a, a, a big, a small one to come. How was lockdown for you? I mean, I've spoken to quite a few farmers who yeah. said, you know what, life just continued pretty much the same. Do you know what? <laughs> I think my wife summed it up very well. She's because she had to work from home and she didn't find it very easy with the kids being at home as well she said for you you've been in lockdown all your life <laughs> and I thought what do you mean and she said well you get up and you just have to go to work where you work yeah and you're used to not going to work with people and you're so, used to not going you know, when party lockdown in. came I'm not being flippant but really it didn't really affect me in the same way as it did other people because mm. I just carried on and in fact <laughs> this sounds mean but because my kids didn't have all the things I had to normally run them to like football and cubs and stuff I could relax a bit so I got you some had decorating a bit done. more time, and you that's know? that's not, and the milk that you produce because some places had to throw milk away then, didn't they? Yeah, but you were all right. There was a scare. We had a um, right at the beginning of lockdown. We had a letter from Muller, who we sell to, and they said you've got to cut your milk production down by ten percent. Which, if you know anything about cows, you can't just turn the tap off. You know, it's all about management of cows as yeah. well, yeah. Um, and. But that, but that was because of the shift from supplying into catering and all the the food you know places that sell milk or use milk to suddenly not having that and having to switch it to supermarkets. But it all came right quite quickly, actually. Did it? Oh, that's mm. good. And and some places were doing things from the farm gate, weren't yeah. they? Are you ever going to well, be set up to do it's that? It's a very difficult one. Um, you need to be sure. I mean, I can't really sell raw milk because of the TB situation in our area. It's really bad rife, and I had TB on the farm this year. So I couldn't sell un- unpasteurised milk. So I'd have to sell it pasteurised, really, which gets into another complication of running that system. But also, I'm not quite in the right spot. I'm in a good location, but I'm not in the right spot in our farmyard to put in a milk thing. I don't, be honest, want everyone driving in and out of our farmyard where we're running a business that tractors driving through and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be right for you. It's got to be the right location, hasn't mm. it? Right, that reminds me of a joke. I've, oh I've had a joke stored up for you for, good, the, for the past week. It's about, it's about milk. Come on then. So some say that milk is the fastest thing on the planet. Do you know why? Because, don't tell me. Because it's past your eyes before oh. you see it. Have you just opened the Christmas crackers? <laughs> <laughs> Music now from Joy Crooks and when you Later single from Joy Crooks and when you were mine it's 22 minutes past 12 on your Sunday afternoon and uh, with us here in the studio is the funky farmer it's Richard Cornock from What an Under Reg. Hello to you. You're getting quite famous now, aren't you, with your YouTube channel? I, I like. You. I I don't think of myself as famous. Honestly, I just say well known because famous <laughs> well known. to me is someone you know 
David Attenborough. Have you ever been noticed in the street by somebody that you don't know yet? And they go, yeah, oh, thank quite, you for all It does happen. Does it? it does happen. I've sat in Bristol Hippodrome and someone's tapped me on the shoulder oh, and said goodness. to me, my children love watching your videos and stuff. Well, you you know, you have a phenomenal amount of uh, viewers now, 138,000. When we first used to um, chat about this years ago, you know, it must have been six or seven years ago, it was still pretty much in its infancy, wasn't it? Do you remember? It's a bit weird. I mean, I think it's all developed over time and stuff. And, um, you know, you, I, 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 wouldn't, I never stepped out to do... I, I started, let me tell you this, Kate, I started putting videos on YouTube uh, properly for you for Fake, uh, Funky Farmer Channel in 2020, 2012. OK. And people weren't really doing it then. The story is, basically, I had a book published, you might remember. Yeah, I remember, and yeah. So I decided to do um, a video version. But yeah. I thought I'd do DVDs because tw- 10 years ago, it was more DVDs. about DVDs. I know. Yes. How about that, that for going back in time? But 10 years ago, we're in a very different world now than we are with the smartphone world and everything like that. So I actually carried a camera for me with me on the farm in 2011 t- for a year filming, yeah. thinking at the end of the year, I'll do DVDs. Anyway, I got so much video, I didn't know what to do with it. Too yeah. much for DVDs. So I started putting it up on YouTube regularly for my kids to watch. Because oh, okay. it was Dad watching... Because oh. at the time, I didn't live on the farm. And they were really little. So I thought they could just watch me. Not realising I'd build this audience. And so it all grew without any... I didn't have a plan. Yeah. And here I am 10 years later, and people sort of know me. And but So know. why do you think it's successful? You know, why have you got so many subscribers who want to listen about a slurry lagoon and stuff? Well, well, hopefully, because I, it's not fake. You know, it is, I'm not trying to show the best of everything. I haven't got the best of everything. I milk cows in the breast parlour. That's this, this day and age, just like a bit of an antique. I haven't got the best tractors. But what I've got is real life on a farm, which you can see from me just chatting. I say if I've had a bad day. I, I say I've had a good day, you know. And, and you, you've noticed probably in, in the last few years as well, it's on TV, there's the My Yorkshire Farm, there's, there's all sorts of these sort of farming programmes that show families, and people seem to have a real interest. Yeah, they certainly do. Now, one of the um, videos, you were taking your kids down to have a look at uh, the ash dieback, well, the ash trees, mm. kicking up the leaves on the ash trees, and we were just saying off air that ash dieback is going to get them at some point yeah. soon. Can you actually see signs of the disease on your trees? Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. It's, this is a, a, quite a thing for me at the moment, actually. I'm very passionate about the trees on the farm because I've just i planted trees over 30 years on the farm. And last year, I just saw a tinge of these, these trees going, a few at the top looking a bit brown and stuff, and I thought, mm, it's not too bad, it'll be OK. This year, particularly sort of later in the year, I suddenly realised, oh, my goodness, these trees are actually dying all around me. And I can see these ash trees that have been there all my life and over 100, 200 years maybe, suddenly they're going to be gone in another five years. And for me, this takes me straight back to when I was a kid in the early 70s, late mid-70s, when Dutch elm disease came through our farm like a tidal wave. And all I really remember is my dad getting a chainsaw out and cutting all these big, beautiful old trees down. And he planked some of them up and made some doors in our house, actually. And um, But at the time, there was so much wood like this around that he was... People were burning it. They were just getting rid of it. And now you won't see an elm tree more than sort of 30 foot high. And I realised this autumn, I thought, I'm going to take my kids down and we're going to kick some leaves underneath an ash tree. Even now I'm choking up a little bit Mm. because I realised that they're going to look back at probably the same as me in 10, 20, 30 years time. Mm. Those ash trees probably won't be there to do that with. Yeah. This is um, National Plant a Tree Week, if, if you follow that sort of thing. And this is the perfect time to be planting trees now up until uh, mid-February sort of time. So it, it, it's just the fact that we have to write, let's be pragmatic about it. Mm. Let's plant some more trees. Definitely. I mean, it is worrying because we've lost the elm. We're losing the ash. You know, those all provide different habitats for different and wildlife on the farm. Mm. And not just losing the trees, we could potentially lose species because of it. Yeah, so let's make sure we plant native things as well. Let's move on to your calendar. This was a great to to receive in the post the other Mm. day. Thank you for thinking of us. So is this the first calendar that you've done? Yeah, I I just thought I'd have a bit of an experiment, actually. You know know I did the book 10 years ago, of photographs on the farm. I've always liked a bit of photography, but 
because I've been doing the videos, it's not been easy for me to get out to and pitch because you can't do everything. And this year, do you know what? People have said to me, why don't you do a calendar for quite a while? So I thought, hey, let's have a go. So yeah. I started doing a few pictures and stuff. And, um, well, here, you've got it in front of there, you. Here I created, we go. Yeah. created a concept mm. of a bit of animals, a bit of tractors. Everyone loves a tractor. Um, but a bit of my kids and family and, and going through the year. Uh, Bit of bit of fun as well. We've got Ken on November. Tell me about Ken. Who's you said oh. that he's a bit of a celeb now. What a character Ken is. Ken Ken Atkinson from Stonehouse, if he's listening, <laughs> he is the equivalent of the Stig on the Funky Farmer channel. So all on his own accord. So I, I've got a bit of merchandise and stuff I sell and my catchphrase on the Funky Farmer channel is crack on. So I created some mugs with crack on written on them, and there's an English one, an Irish one, a Scottish one, a Welsh one. Anyway, Ken got hold of a crack on mug, and, and he works for BT and travels around the country um, sort of with his job. He started taking this mug with him, and what he'd do is he'd position it somewhere, um, somewhere well known. In fact, if you look at the calendar, Kate, I think you've got it on it. One of the pictures is actually outside the Vicar of Dibley's cottage. Is it? Yeah, if you can see a little cottage there, you'll probably see it's on the gatepost. I think it's oh, on it. Yeah, that's, that's Vicar of Dibley's cottage. Where is that? Where? that. Where? And where I, is that? I'm not sure where that is, actually. We have to Google that one because I haven't asked yeah. Ken about it too much because I haven't seen him for it. I've only met him once, and twice, actually. Um, but he's carried it around because his patch is sort of mostly Wales and a bit of Devon and Cornwall and stuff. He's carried it with him and put it on a gate post or on a... Um, he's got... What's that name, street name or town name that's really long in Wales? Clang... I can't, I can't say that. It. Can I'll you try? embarrass myself. No, Anyone I Anyone Welsh cannot. listening, we apologise now. I'll just make an absolute fool. No, I know that double L is a sound, I isn't it? Clan fair... <laughs> yes, I know. We, we do apologise to the entire Welsh nation Can at this moment. somebody give us a call and tell us how to say it's, that? It's a long name, isn't it? But uh, there's a mug next to that yeah. sign. Our telephone number, if you want to give us a call, 0800 121 7575. Let's break for some music and then we'll be back with the Funky Farmer after Genesis. Very soon we're going to be hearing from Catherine Steinen, who is an agronomist. It's a World Soil Day today, so we're talking about the health of our soil. But first of all, let's welcome back to the studio Richard Cornock, dairy farmer in Wootton under Edge, who's also known as the Funky Farmer on YouTube. And um, it's nearly your 10th anniversary, isn't it? It is, next year, over 10, 10 years. And 200 years of the farm being in the family business, being in the family I hands. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? I can't believe it, really. I'm not that <laughs> Don't old. Don't look that old, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, uh, you went to Hartbury College, was it known as then? That's right, yeah. Hartbury I keep forgetting University. Forgetting call it university. Yes. Um, and they asked you to go in not that long ago to, to chat to prospective students. So how how's that going back to somewhere wow. where you've studied? what an amazing place to go to as well now I um so I was there in 1985 to 1988 did an NDA in agriculture and I was there with a, a lovely group of friends you know there's people like Pip and there's Trev and stuff turns out Trev who I was a student with is now head of ag at wow. Harvey College and he he said to me a while ago you know every now and then we see each other he said to me do you fancy coming into the college and just have doing some videos because uh, uh, I do tend to sometimes go off to different places and do videos that I've done a baker and a butcher's and different things. And he said, come into the college. And I said, well, yeah, sure, if, you, if you're up for that, I'll go and have a look. So uh, beginning of November, I went there. Uh, and he gave me a backseat tour, back, you know, backstage tour, if you like. I met some students. I sat on a self-driving tractor, which is the first for me. <laughs> um, I saw someone doing, a, you know, it was brilliant. I, I was so impressed by the talent there. I saw a girl doing a, t a telehandler course there, telehandler, these sort of big machines that sort of move stuff around the farm. She she did a three-day course, and it, and it was quite a skillful job, big machine, £60,000 worth of machinery. Turned out she was 16. Wow. And the skill she had, I was watching her place a pallet up on a high tower, and unbelievable. Um, and the enthusiasm from the students there was incredible, but also... The facilities at Hartbury now for studying, not just maybe farming, you've also got equine and sport there and veterinary and stuff, but the, the agricultural facilities there are amazing. The classrooms, state of the art, the dairy unit, wow, walks the into that. The milking parlour. Wow, have you seen it, it's, Well, we've done interviews over, mm. the, over the last few years and they've won awards, haven't they? Oh, it's brilliant. Uh, and do you know what? That's just what you need to encourage young people into farming because reality is farming itself is a difficult profession 
a lot of younger children or not, or young teenagers and stuff might think, why would I go into farming? But if you can get to Hartbury and see, you know, some of these state of the art equipment and facilities and stuff, it builds your enthusiasm for the job. And and the staff there are great. You know, the whole thing I was just I thought it was brilliant. I did a four part video. And you can see all the range of stuff from the ag tech center to the welding, to driving a tractor, to milking a cow. It was, I was, I really loved it. Did the students ask you questions as well? I, I, I met the students briefly. We, we didn't have a lot of time with the students because I was seeing so much, but I'm sure I'll end up back there yeah. chatting to them. But I did meet a load of them. One thing that uh, stands out um, from an interview we did recently was about the, the toys that the cows play with. Like yes. these, these mad things that they can kick about and um, things hanging around as well. That, go on, tell there's me about it. There's a brush. It's, it's have a you brush. seen the brush? No. Oh, there's a brush. It, it's, do it's, you want to have a go? I, I do you know. <laughs> hell of a back scratcher. <laughs> this is what cows love rubbing on things, actually. And during the summer, like our cows, they're outside and we've got tree trunks that are actually smooth and shiny. And you rub your hands on this like someone's polished them, where they, they like a scratch, you know, like a rub. Uh, but in this uh, in this dairy unit, there's this brush that, that rotates. And I, I call it on video, actually. Uh, part four of the uh, Return to Hartbury videos, you go on YouTube and put in part four, Return to Hartbury, you can find these um, the video. And there's a, a Guernsey cow having a right old scrub rub on this brush. <laughs> I thought, actually, I wouldn't mind a game myself. I was going to say, I bet that's quite nice, that massive loofah. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, well, that must have brought back a lot of memories. Oh, it did. Back to, it's so uh, good to reminisce you. about the place I bet like you that. wish you could go there now to study again, don't you? Do you, you know what? You are absolutely spot on. I went there. I had student envy. I looked around the facilities there and I thought, you know, and, and also, to be honest, it was one of the happiest days of my life getting to Hartbury College. You know, your, your student days are wonderful. I think if you've got a chance to go to a place like that, it's about learning, but it's also about camaraderie and people. And some of these people that I met there in 1985, I'm still friends with now. And that yeah. is a lovely thing to meet up with. I'm going to see one of them, my friend Pip in a minute who lives just outside of Cheltenham we're going to see her in the next half an hour after this great well we will look forward to today's video because um, Richard has been doing a bit of filming here for your Funky Farmer channel uh, me here in the studio so uh, we'll see that up in the next couple of days perhaps will we yeah, you will. Come around now. You've got the, um, got the, we've got the calendar yeah, as if well. You want, if you want a calendar, <laughs> go on richardcornock.co.uk oh, and go. you go to the shop and you can buy a calendar or go. just Google Funky Farmer calendar. Just Google Funky Farmer on YouTube left. as well and you'll find them. Richard, thank you. And I should say, you're the first person I'm going to say this to. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas to you. Kate Clark. BBC Radio Gloucestershire.